You've seen my house, Quillweave well, says. There's just one bed and a whole lot of cold stone floors. I could honestly sleep on a cold stone floor. I can sleep, like, upside down. I don't know if I've said it before, but I fell asleep leaning up against a wall once. No one... Well, actually, the people that were there believed me, but... Not many people think I'm being serious when I say that. As alternative... As an alternative, build yourself a nest in a tree. Sleep atop a chimney as a rooster sleeps. Blow thine calls into the night and attract a gaggle of a match on the... Drynif... Guinea fallow. I have no idea what half those words mean. Sleep atop a chimney as the rooster sleeps. Bellow thine. I'm guessing that's like the thing at the bottom of a rooster's neck, the little dangly bits. Into the night and attract a gaggle of matronly. Matronly. So motherly. Guinea follow. I don't know what that means. Guinea. I know if guinea pigs are an animal. Uh, fowl are birds. I don't actually know what the prefix guinea means. I can't highlight that right. Hey, you're not a bird. You understand the cat jokes, but why? where did the bird thing come from? It's not even offensive. Amulet sparked. The bed is big enough for Cadia and an orc and a necromancer and... I think they could all fit. Uh, I don't think that's how Skyrim works. Actually... Actually, no, it is how Skyrim works, but that's still an odd question. You tell Quillie that you assumed it was going to be like a sleepover or something. You figured you'd both just cram into the bed, or maybe you would make a pile of blankets to sleep on, but you can understand if she's not okay with that. She says that would probably be kind of awkward. She really doesn't have that many blankets and is used to sleeping like a total hermit. She'd kind of rather you just find somewhere else. It's... Nothing personal. You tell her you are fine with undergarments, but it's okay. You understand. She's already done a lot for you, and you don't want to impose. You're thankful she invited you to dinner, and you really appreciate how she agreed not to drink anything while she was there. It might have not have seemed like much, but that meant a lot to you. Most people wouldn't do something like that. You say thanks. You'll just grab your hood and be on your way, then. It's fine. We'll probably let you sleep on the pews back at the chapel. Oh, when you accidentally guilt trip someone that bad. Guilt her about the spiked water and share the bed. <laughs> With her luck, there would be some sort of freak thunderstorm overnight. I'm pretty sure Cadia just has like, like in oblivion, one of the traits that you have is literally luck. You have a luck trait. And I think her luck is either zero or somehow became negative. Because, like, it starts as a default as, like, 20 to 50 for people. I don't think she even has 20. <laughs> it is a big enough bed, Quillweave says. If you seriously want to do the sleepover thing, it probably wouldn't be too weird, right? You promise you won't make it weird, you say. You don't want to be, like, a burden or anything if she'd rather you stay somewhere else though. She says it's alright. She thought about it and you'd just be sleeping here for like half a night before leaving, so it's no big deal. You thank her profusely and promise you'd be out of her hair as soon as possible. I mean, metaphorical hair. Fins? You gather up your stuff right now so you can leave right away in the morning and she'll have the place to herself again. <laughs> Quill we've just... <laughs> being coerced into this by the gods. Maybe Cadia's luck of zero is just the gods working in mysterious ways. You know, that's the big brain play. You're kind of worried about staying at the chapel, you explain, since you've never been very good at sleeping on hard surfaces, and it also would have been very easy for someone to steal your amulet. If you lost that in the night, you might have accidentally burned the chapel down, and that would have been awful. Yeah, Quillweave says. She knew a mage once who accidentally started a fire at a bar. Someone tried to pour a bottle of water on it, but turned out the bottle was ac actually full of clear rum. Can you believe that? Ah. Uh, who would have done such a thing? 
They do look about the same, you reply. You think most people can smell a difference. You don't know, your nose is kind of bad, especially for a Khajiit, but visually you can see where someone would make that mistake. Quilweave may be friendly, but I don't think she's willing to exchange writing notes just yet. By the way, would it be alright if I borrowed a pencil? You're thinking you might want to take notes tomorrow, in case you have to remember anything. You don't know a lot about note-taking, though. Maybe you guys could exchange writing tips before you go to sleep? You heard she... you heard she had some. <laughs> it's really turning over into a... it's really turning into a sleepover, but Caddy is gonna be exhausted in the morning. Knowing her luck, she's gonna oversleep and miss her rounds with the patrol. Quillweave suggests that you could offer tips after Caddy's trip, and she probably wants as much sleep as she can get. Hope she forgets about an apparently embarrassing topic before she gets back. Wait. Probably as much sleep as she can get. Hope she forgets about an apparent. Oh, exchanging notes with the fellow from Kavach. Quillweave says that borrowing a pencil is fine, and she hands you one from her pocket. It's late, though, so it might be better to discuss writing tips when you get back from Kavach. She's probably right. You need to get to bed. You thank her for the pencil and continue gathering your supplies for tomorrow. Invent, invent water clock by hanging tub near the bedroom with a long burning candle plugging a hole near the base of it. Before going to sleep, make sure the candle is lit. When the candle melts down to a certain point, water will start running out of the tub and into a cloth that will slowly become saturated. This cloth will be o hanging over Cadia's face and drip water onto her at some point early point in the morning. Hopefully she chooses, chooses a candle that will burn the right amount of time. You are positive that you could build an elaborate alarm clock using only the supplies in this room, but that would take a while, and you've already borrowed enough of Quillweave's stuff. <laughs> what even is in that crate already? You'd need to take whatever's in there out first. So you are opt for plan B. You call back to the other room and ask if she has any regular drinking water. She says it's on the shelf by the door. Make sure it's a bottle that says water. This will sound stupid, but, uh, whatever. Try talking to your amulet? What? By the way, enchanted items have souls trapped in them, right? Do you think it's possible to talk to them? Koli says it's definitely possible to talk to them, but it wouldn't do much since they have no ears to hear with and no mouth to respond with. Also, the soul is usually in animals, meaning it wouldn't carry on very good conversation. Oh, you say, just wondering. Wait, do we still have the skeleton the necromancer left behind? Train the skeleton to be an alarm clock, that's what I was saying earlier. Alas, the reanimated skeleton appears to have collapsed face first and died immediately after completing his task. Where did the skeleton collapse? That's just a bunch of skulls. Oh, there's the legs. He did a pretty good job, though. Looks like he changed the sheets, stacked up the skulls, bundled up those leather straps, and cleared the broken glass out of the window frame. Rest in peace, skeleton butler. Cadia, you think you're becoming way too excited for this late of night. I'm sure Quilly would agree. It's late and time to get to bed. You want to wake up early, after all. True, you gotta get up and travel in a couple of hours. It's time to calm down. Switch off the dark vision and actually get to sleep. Sleeping with dark vision, that just sounds weird. You thank Quillweave again for letting you stay here. You guess it's kind of funny, since it's the same place you stayed the last few nights, but seriously, you really appreciate it. <laughs> Caddy is just like... Teen energy. You asked her about what that one time in, what was it again, Chorl? You missed that story. Yeah, what's a sleepover without some gossip? At least you think that's what people do at sleepovers. I never really was much of a gossip person. Oh, back at dinner you mentioned something about a friend in Choro. I was listening to something else and missed that story. I'm super curious though, what happened? Glowweave says it was nothing, she'd rather not talk about it. I'll have to pester her for details later. After all, she knows a lot about your life. You pester her a little more about it. Come on, you say. You know all about my life. Quilly reminds her that she never asked about your life. You just kept ending up in her bed. You say you're, that you're really sorry about that. It was an accident, but 
I really am kind of curious what other people are like, and it sounds like you had something going on in Troll. She says it was nothing. She has a writer friend in Troll. There is nothing involved. End of story. <laughs> it all started with a kiss. How did it end up like this? It was just a kiss. You barely contain a squeal. That's adorable and romantic. I never pegged you as a sappy smooch romantic quill. Oh, God, did he travel all the way up there just to see him? To see her. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. This whole thing right now with us here is probably really awkward. Yeah, she says, kind of. So when you gave me that pineapple the other day, was it because you knew I was going to... <laughs> Wait, what? Quill even interrupts you and says that absolutely any time but now would be a more comfortable time to talk about this. Right, sorry, sleeping. I suppose we can just wait for you to have that nightmare and hope it wakes you up at the right time, but that doesn't seem ideal. You may be biased on the matter, but quite frankly, you'd rather not have the horrific, life-ruining nightmare wake you up in the morning. Yeah, that's probably not a good thing to wake up to. This is your first time sleeping since you've sleeping sober since you've arrived, and that's scary to you. You're pretty sure you'll dream about whatever you're thinking about most when you fall asleep. And that's how you got through the ship ride anyways. You don't like the way your old nightmare is lingering in your head? You need to concentrate on something else. Cadia. Nobles, nobles, nobles. Let all the stress and anxiety you've been suppressing all evening unload all at once. This as the several hours you spent in the actual presence of an actual countess as a whole new dimension to your reoccurring nightmare. Cadia, nobles, 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 nobles. I'm surprised I did that all in one breath. Cadia, when your dream turns into a nightmare, dot dot dot, <laughs> question the strange drollery around the evil emperor's neck. Could it mean anything? Not helping. Seriously, your reoccurring nightmare isn't something to joke about. Every night for seven years, you've drowned copious amounts of liquor just to keep it away. The only reason you're even in Cyrodiil is because you got better at controlling it. You know how to force nightmares on yourself. And as long as they aren't that nightmare, you're okay with it. It's what let you put that bottle away long enough to make a plan. But you've never tried to make yourself have a good dream that... Then again, prior to today, you've never had much good to dream about. Poor Quillweave. You close your eyes and try to think about nothing but cakes and fluffy clouds and rainbows and other sh sagarath things, miscellaneous happy thoughts. You remind yourself that you are finally turning your life around for the first time. Things are looking up for you. You're Cadia Monagon now. Things are going to be all right. You concentrate on happy, delicious cake and thoughts, and you're going to have happy dreams about, oh, I read that out of order. You tell yourself, Hey, there's a cake. There's something happy in your dream. It must be your birthday. The guests must be hiding because it's a surprise party. Who could be throwing you such a party? Why, your childhood friends, of course. Barry, Hannibal, Orin, Dara Hill, Madden, and the rest of the gang. You've known them for years. A surprise party is just a sort of trick old Lyles would pull up. What a cut up. They'll probably come barging in at any moment. Orin will probably be carrying a big armload of presents and dramatically throw them down in the middle of the room. Uh, oh. What if they're dressed better than you? It would be embarrassing if you were the only one there half naked. Maybe it's an underwear party? I hope Garug doesn't show up. He got drunk and made a complete 
mess of himself at Quillweave's wedding, and things have been really awkward with him ever since. What? <laughs> Actually, wait, that describes dreams perfectly. Never mind, I retract that what statement. Take off the necklace and practice your fire magic on the candles. It's stuck. Katia, imagine some clothes for yourself. Hey, wizard powers! Do not touch the cake on the floor. That's unsanitary. What cake? Make a wish and blow out the candle. That wasn't a good idea. Is that King Bosphoramus Hyrule? I forget what the guy's name was. Um, Emperor Septum. Is she having dreams about him too, just as he was having dreams of her? Except her dreams are twisted for some reason. Why are the arrows like this all of a sudden? Dream sequence. Stop being too dark to see on my monitor. <laughs> There's the cat eyes. Katia, don't turn around and decide to wake up instead. Katia, just imagine nothing behind you, as in specifically nothing, so that there is, without a doubt, nothing behind you. Oh, maybe Quillweave is next to you too? With the power of friendship, you can overcome any obstacle, be it kingly or noble. <laughs> Quillweave doesn't even look... <laughs> Quillweave's just like, what? Oh, that would be so weird if Quillweave remembers her dreams, because um, dreams in Skyrim actually do usually have meaning, and it actually is possible to end up in another person's dream. There was a quest actually related to the Daedric god of Magnus, Shegarath, or whatever his name was, that involved you having to go into another person's dream. <laughs> that would be so weird if Quillweave just woke up at the same time as her and they both had the nightmare. Listen to what Emperor Uriel has to say. Listen for the words find and jaws specifically. Uriel Septim, that's his name. Oh, it's reaching for Quillweave. Huh. Politely inquire as to why he placed his hand on your mental projection of your best friend. <laughs> Pap, leave her alone. Oh. Ah. Go to your happy place. Don't let him take control of you. Take control of him. The Nightmare King ruined the life of a young Khajiit, but you're not the same scared, sad, lonely little girl anymore, are you? Tell him your name, Katia Monagon, and make sure he understands what it means. Katia, make that king scared of you instead. You are brave, and you are strong. Oh. What is he but one man? One man of a... Impressive size and capability, but one man nonetheless. Uh, even my nightmares don't get this bad. <laughs> Katia, hide in the other command used box. Also, imagine the Imperial Legion soldier because that's not even a king anymore, it's just a monster. Tear off the amulet, unleash the fury of your flames. Oh no, if she. If she's actually moving around in her nightmares, what if she actually tears off the amulet, like, in real life, and just starts lighting the whole place on fire? Yeah, that's not really a king anymore. Wake up, wake up, real Cadia. Cadia, paint yourself somewhere with your monocolored blood, and set up her ruse in a distraction to point... Just put your pointy kitty ears and noble body with legs. Go to your happy place. Yeah, that looks more like a demon monster from some video game than a king. This is just pathetic. Go fight or go home. Fight to the death, Caddy. Yeah, you'll get hurt, but if you go down fighting, you'll show that even when the worst has come, you can brave it. And besides, everyone knows you can't die in a dream. You just wake up. Cadia, rise up. Ascend. You're not perfect. You're not a fighter. You may even be irrelevant to the gods. But you are already taking the first steps along a long road towards becoming great. 
Who knows how far you'll go? Who cares? You've accomplished quite the feat in the past 24 hours, have you not? It's okay to be afraid of dreams. It's alright to fear the lurking horror horrors of your own mind, but every weakness you find in the mist beneath your consciousness is another potential strength waiting to be refined. Ride out the storm, Cadia, and you will survive this nightmare, and you'll be stronger for it. You have a little pride. You deserve it. Cadia, you can win this you can win this since a nightmare can't hurt you, no matter what it tries to do. Uh I wouldn't say that. Especially if this is... Hmm. Um. It's gotten a bit sappy all of a sudden. I'm concerned for Katia, and I don't think this is gonna work. But I know that feeling of dying in a dream and just waking up in real life, because when I was younger I used to be plagued by nightmares too. Actually, sort of like how she's plagued by the king. My parents had, um, this covering for a vacuum cleaner that was a little bear wearing a maid's dress and for some reason i always had nightmares of it it started out with while i'm sitting in the living room i have a clear line of sight to where the bear thing used to be whenever i would sit there watching tv and my nightmares would always start with me sitting there on the couch watching tv and just I'd keep seeing movement out of the corner of my eyes. And every now and then when I'd look over, the bear would just be missing. Like completely gone. For about a year, that was all it was. And then it just kept getting worse. After I started having that nightmare for about six months, the bear started moving in front of me. Like I'd go over to check out where it was and it would be completely somewhere else when I went into the back room that it was in. Or it would move as I came up to it to go back to it, which would just jump scare me right out of the dream like I was watching a horror movie or something. But then it got worse and worse. Eventually the bear started moving towards me instead of just seeming sort of neutral or moving in the distance. And sometimes it would come at me like aggressively. Eventually, after like... A few years of having the dream, I was terrified of it in real life. Like, I would not go into the back room unless I absolutely had to because of it. And then eventually in the dreams, I'd, it would move again and disappear. But when I'd go back to see what happened, I'd just see my parents having been attacked by it. And then it would come after me, and that's when, at the end of the dreams, I started dying. Which would, every single time, just wake me up in a dead sweat at, like, 2 o'clock at night. And, like, even looking at it today, I still have flashbacks every time I see it. I was irrationally scared of it for ages even though I knew that they were just dreams. So I actually really understand where Caddy is coming from with dreams like this, besides the fact that it's a fantasy world where this probably has actual meaning outside of just a reoccurring nightmare. But like my earlier years were, I did not get good sleep. I have fear. It just played the know you card. Cadia, you can win this, since a nightmare can't hurt you no matter what it tries to do. Dreams can't hurt you. Maybe it really does just want to talk. Surely you can handle a little pain. It's only temporary until you wake up, and then everything will be okay again. I've noticed that in dreams, whenever I'm hurt by something, it doesn't feel like pain. It feels like numbness. It's like if I get a cut on my arm, then my arm will just feel numb in the dream. Um, when I'm asleep, I can still feel my real body. I used that as a defense mechanism when I was younger to wake myself up. I found out that I could still feel my actual body while I was asleep, and I'd just either slap myself or force myself to stand up in the middle of the night, and that would usually wake me up. Um, 
after a while that stopped working and that's about when I started sleepwalking. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I do that too much anymore. Then again, I don't dream too much anymore to know. Surely you can handle a little pain. It's only temporary until you wake up and then everything will be okay again. That's why the arrows are weird. Hey guys, that's where I'm going to leave this episode off with me just finishing up talking about my dreams as, well, Cadia was finishing up having her dream. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Eh? See ya!